Hey everybody, today on Rado Runs Through, we're looking at Arc Nova. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Clayon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you know what they are. And if you've done that, well then welcome to my Arc Nova, my new Arc. Uh, gotta love it when heavy Euros rock the Latin titles like Agricola. Alrighty, I'm gonna be doing a run through of this game today solo to give you an idea of what it's all about. And I've got the game set up. There's a bunch of cards out here on the main display. I could grab. I have a starting reputation of one. I have uh, contributed to no conservancy projects anywhere in the world. And normally, uh, if you're playing a multiplayer game, you start out with zero appeal. Nobody cares about coming to your zoo. But the game suggests for the solo game that you start with either 20 appeal uh, if you're a brand new player or 10 appeal if you're experienced. Now, I'm not saying that's a good idea for me, but what the heck. I've, I've played this game a few times now, so I'm going to start out with 10. And my goal is to race against the clock. This is representing another player uh, and the passage of time. I have less than 30 turns. I think it's 27 turns based on this clock to do enough growth of my zoo so that I will not have negative points. If I can make it craw claw my way up to where I have just zero victory points, I will win. And um, yeah, that's kind of representative of the real multiplayer game too. The first time I played this game, I clocked in at negative two victory points at the end of the game. Although I think my highest score so far is, was 14 or maybe it was 18. I forget. Anyway though, uh, I'm going to be showing you how this works. And as part of setup, I've gotten a very unique uh, landscape. Uh, there happens to be a commercial harbor nearby that I can activate if I build down in this area. And now everybody gets their own unique board. Uh, you could be building next to the Hollywood Hills, which means you have access to uh, rich Hollywood types to sponsor your activities. Or you could have had ice cream parlors, which means you want to get these spaces filled up quick so you can make extra income because everybody loves ice cream. Or um, a park restaurant. Get this building surrounded as fast as possible. Or a research institute down here, which makes it easier to uh, get animals uh, cards in play. Or outdoor areas, all kinds of stuff. Now, that's if you're playing the normal game. The other side of these has an A map which uh, means everybody can start with the exact same layout, the exact same special power, which is, hey, at the beginning of the game, you have one enclosure already built, and that's the special power, as opposed to mine, where I can basically, anytime I want, once per turn, I can discard a card and get three bucks. So for me, thanks to this commercial harbor, my cards are multi-use cards. Normally they're not. But anyway, if everybody's playing on the A map, uh, you just have the same basic starting power, you have the same layout of bonuses all over the sides of the boards and on the map itself. And actually, this is a very generous map. There's lots of bonuses all over the place. Uh, you can see, not quite so many on my map. There's actually one other type of map. Let's see where's one of them. Uh, map zero, which is the, like the next step. It's still got very generous bonuses on the sides, but fewer bonuses out here and no nice big starting thing of, hey, start with the tile. I'm skipping all those intro ones and going right to a normal one. If I connect anything down here next to this commercial harbor, I can start jessing cards. So I start with nothing built. I do start with 25 bucks and one agent that I'll be able to send out in the world to do uh, good works on my behalf. And I start with a hand of four cards. Actually, everybody starts with eight, and then you have to discard down to four. And I got rid of these four. I got rid of the rock python, the meerkat den, the sea turtle tank, and the red kangaroo. Why did I jettison those? Because also as part of setup, there are three conservancy cards over here that we are objectives we can be chasing after. In this game, it's all about getting primates, predators, and birds into the zoo. And so I kept the cards. I Hey, I've got a, uh, a white face uh, a capuchin, which is a primate. I've got savanna, which is about releasing predators to the wild. So if I can get predators into my zoo, score this conservancy bonus by having enough predators, I could then play this savanna card and release my predators to the wild and get even more conservancy bonus out of them. Let's see, I've got one bird, a, a long-billed vulture, and then I've got, oh, and uh, Indian peafowl. So I've got a couple of birds. So my early game might be trying to get birds into my zoo so that I can score this bonus. But that's not all. As part of setup, everybody gets two secret objective cards. I want either a climbing park 
or a research zoo. And this says I'll get more conservancy bonuses at the end of the game if I've got more science icons or if I've got animals that like rocky enclosures. So I'm going to only score one of these at the end of the game. I don't have to decide right now. But considering that my vulture is a rocky creature, that might be what I'm going for. Uh, yeah. Although, interestingly, this vulture is a rocky creature, and it requires science to get it into play. So this one works for both of the objectives. Okay, so you can see kind of why uh, this made sense to have this as my starting hand of cards. So, in a multiplayer game, everybody would do that. Everybody would start with their one agent, their 25 bucks, and their eight cards they discard down to four. And now, we are ready to go. Let's Nova this arc. Not that that makes any sense at all. Okay, so how does a turn work? Well... I've got these five cards here. Everybody has these five cards. And they're actually supposed to be underneath my board over here. But as you can see, they would have gone off the edge of the screen. So I've just tucked another player's board under to indicate my card, my drawing more cards, you know, getting more options card, is at level one. My build card is level two. My sponsor is level four. My association is level five. That means my association card right now is my most powerful card. If I wanted to do it, I would get to do a level five association action. Whereas if I wanted to build, I can only do a level two build action. And as part of setup, your cards card is always supposed to be in the number one slot, and these other ones are placed randomly. So what do I want to do? Well, I need to build my zoo. So it might be smart for me to start out by building and doing a level 2 build. And once I've actually built an enclosure, I can do an animal action. Right now I could do a level 3 animal action. If I had any sponsor cards in my hand, which are blue cards, oh, there's one over there out on the main board, this... Um, spotted hyena compound, then I could, if I had this in my hand, I could use the sponsor action to get it into play. And um, the association action means I send my agent out into the world, either to create partnerships with zoos in other countries, partnerships with universities, just try to increase my renown uh, generally, or if I can do a level 5 association, I can claim one of these bonuses if I've got enough primates, predators, or birds. Now, that's great to have the association in the number five slot, but I mean, I got to get two birds in play, or at least two predators, or at least two primates, although really, I'd like to do more. If I have four birds in play when I say, hey, I have hit this target, I'll get four conservancy, or five and five. But because I'm playing solo, racing against that, I've only got 27 turns, if I recall correctly, so I don't have a lot of time to go for the big high things. We'll see how that works out. So anyway, what do I want to do? Well... Like I said, I think it does make sense to start out building because I can't get any animals in my zoo if I don't build it up. So my first action is I'm going to build. And what you do is you choose the card you want, you slide it down here so you can remember what it is you're doing this turn. And specifically, I am doing a level 2 build action, which means I can, do, I can build one building right now up to a size of two. It costs me two bucks per space. And the types of buildings I can build are kiosk pavilions, standard enclosures, and a petting zoo. Later on, if I upgrade this card, which is a very, very cool thing, all five of these cards can become significantly more powerful over the course of the game. If I upgrade it, then I can build multiple buildings, totaling up the power level of the card, and I get access to the bird aviary and the reptile house as well. But that's for later. But considering I've got a couple of bird cards, it might make... Although, this bird card can go into the aviary. Uh, the peacock, the peafowl cannot go into the aviary. But still, that might be something for later. I'm going to build. Right now, I'm going to do a level 2 build. That means I can build a... Um, well, I can build uh, a kiosk or a pavilion because those are size 1. Let me just go ahead and zoom in there a little bit. Uh, the game does a really good job of reminding you pretty much everything you need to know while playing. So I could build a kiosk or pavilion. I could build a petting... No, I couldn't build a petting zoo because that is a size 3. And as you can see, I can only build a size 2 right now. But I could build a size 1 enclosure, a 2, a 3, a 4, or a 5. The aviary and the reptile house, these bigger things, are denied me right now. I am going to go on ahead and build a size 2. That cost me one, two, three, four, two per space. So that's going to cost me four bucks. I'll spend the five. I'll get one in change. And now I am going to start building my Arc Nova. The first thing you build has to come in from the outskirts. And strictly speaking, I probably want to come in over here. Because if I connect this commercial harbor, I will unlock this ability to be able to discard cards to make money whenever I want. But here's the problem. If I come in down here, I'm really far away from all these cool bonuses up there. 
I mean, I've got this bonus, which is kind of nice, but not great, and I'll have to build quite a while. If I wanted to, I could just come in right up here and get access to an X. X tokens are the most powerful tool you will get in this game. Because if you have X tokens on hand, whenever you are activating, say later on I wanted to activate a uh, level 4 sponsor, but I really wanted to do a level 5 sponsorship, I could spend an X and turn this level 4 into a level 5. I could spend multiple Xs and turn this level 3 into a level 5. So getting X tokens is huge! It gives you so much power and flexibility. And so I kind of want to build up here, because then, hey, I'm not too far away from getting to another X token if I build over there. And I'm not too far from being able to um, increase my zoo's reputation if I build down there. That's really the place to go. But then I'm a long ways away from my commercial harbor. So maybe I should come down here and build down there. And then it'll take me quite a while before I get those X's. I might regret this. And i got to ask myself, do I have any cards in my hand that I want to get rid of? Not necessarily. These are all good. I've got a primate in two birds. And I've got one for predators, too. These are all objectives that are good for me. Mm. But you know what? Sooner or later, I'm going to draw some cards. And those cards are going to be bad. I mean, hopefully when you draw cards blind, you get good stuff, but you might get stuff you don't care about. And at that point, it just wastes space in your hand. So having the ability to jettison them, I am going to do that. And plus, the quicker you can get money in the game, the better. Because things get expensive fast in Ark Nova. So, okay, so I've gone on ahead and built here. I now have an empty enclosure. It's a size 2, which means later on, I could spend 11 bucks and put the uh, Panamanian Whiteface uh, Capuchin, which needs a size 2 enclosure, in there. And then I would start building up my zoo. So that's kind of my goal. My next action might be to do the animals action. Anyway, so on a turn, you slide this down to remember what you're doing. You do whatever it is based on whatever power it is. And so I've done that. And you deal with any kind of um, you know, knock-ons or you know, special bonus things that might happen. Right now, starting out pretty simple. Nothing else is happening. And then you take that card, slide the other ones over, and it suddenly becomes your weakest card. And now, on my next turn, I could build again, but it would only be a size 1 building. Which means it wouldn't be much good to me at all. Uh, so, really, if I want to build bigger enclosures so I can get more animals, like what? Um, my... My monkey needs a size 2, my vulture needs a size 4, and it's a rocky enclosure, and remember, um, that might be a good bonus for me. And the uh, peafowl needs a size 3. So I need this build action to work its way up, so I can build these bigger enclosures for these bigger animals. Or, I need to get some sweet, sweet X tokens, so I can just bump stuff up as needed. But I decided to jettison those by going for this instead. We'll see how well that works out for me. Anyway, this slide's over, but now the card action has become more powerful. Anyway, my turn is over. It would be the next player's turn. They would do the same thing. They've got five cards. They pick one. They slide it down. They do whatever. They slide it over, and the game continues. The core gameplay here is really smooth and elegant, in spite of the fact that there's so much going on. But it's even simpler in the solo game, because I don't have any opponents. Instead, I've just got this timer. And this is saying, at the end of uh, seven turns, there will be a break happening. So I just mic this over. At the end of my next turn, I'll slide it over, slide it over. Once I have taken seven turns, we'll have a break. Okay, so we'll worry about that in a second. So that was my opponent's turn, and my opponent is nothing more than a clock trying to run me out of time. Okay, I get to go again. Hooray! Let's go on ahead and do that animal action. So, um, because this is in slot 3, you can see I could uh, get one animal and place an enclosure. If this were all the way up here to step 5, I could in one turn get two animals into an enclosure, and that's awesome. This is a game about trying to be as efficient as possible. In one turn, getting two animals in play is great, but that's not going to happen because I'm not going to wait for it to slide all the way up here. I am going to go... Oh, 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 actually, hold on a second. Am I going to do this? Because I've got the enclosure for my um, uh, capuchin, but my capuchin has a few requirements. The basic anatomy of these cards is top left is what you need, top right is what it provides, and then when you put it into play, it also does some kind of special immediate bonus. Oh, and there's some green screen. Let's go on ahead and just uh, uh, get a better look at this sweet little monkey. So, I need to have 11 bucks. I've got that. I need to have a size 2 enclosure. I just built that. I also need to have an association with a North American zoo. The, the, you know, this is a North American animal, which is reminded over here. This says I need to be associated. So 
I don't have that. I cannot put this monkey into play. I need to have friends with other zoos to have the expertise necessary to be able to be a responsible steward for this animal's safety and well-being. So, I can't do it yet. So, let's go on ahead and put this on hold. Let's do an association. I need an association with, a, with another zoo. Let's do it. So, uh, this reminds me that, hey, perform one association task with, task with a maximum value of five. And so, what does that mean? Well, we come over here and we look at this association board and what have we got? Well, a level five action means I could take one of my cubes and mark my progress on primates, predators, or birds if... I had done two birds, two predators, three primers. I haven't done that yet. So I'm not going to, even though I have a level five action, I'm not going to do a level five action. I could do a level four action, which means I could make a, uh, an association with a university. This university would give me two research tokens, which is great because my vulture needs research tokens before I can put it into play. Or I could get a double, or I could get one research token, which is all I really need. Plus, I could increase my zoo's reputation by two. That's another track. There are actually three tracks you make progress on in this game. Your reputation, which basically gives you access to more and more of these face-up cards. Plus, it occasionally unlocks very cool bonuses the higher you go. That's the reputation. Down here is the appeal. This says how much money I make during a break. And a break is going to happen after seven turns. Remember, this is a special thing for solo. Normally, breaks happen based on player actions. But in the, in the solo game, they base on a fixed schedule. And during a break, I make income. Currently, because I started out here... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to start here at level 10. I can either start at level 10 or level 20 appeal. Since I'm at level 10 in the solo game, I'm going to make 12 money when we go on a break. The more appeal I have, the more money I will make. And I need that money to uh, build, build, build. Right, so this whatever it is, goes back up to 10 appeal. The third track I work on is this conservancy track. And when I go up on this one, I jump up multiple spaces. And that gets more and more powerful the farther I go. If, I, if I'm if i up there and I just get one conservancy, it's like I jumped up three appeal. Because you can see, a one conservancy is three appeal. This game, in a multiplayer game, is as a very interesting timing mechanism. You keep playing, working your way up, getting more appeal, getting more conservancy actions, until eventually your appeal and your conservancy meet. And that's what triggers the end of a competitive version of this game. Once that happens, everybody else gets one more turn, and then you do final scoring. So it might be you have a lot of appeal and not much con um, conservation, or vice versa, the other way around. Um, in the solo game, though, uh, the, end doesn't ha the end happens on a fixed timer based on this little timer. So it doesn't matter whether they cross or not. I'll be lucky in the 27 turns I've got if I get them to cross. I have to work really hard to make that happen. i got to get a lot of appeal, and i got to get a lot of conservation projects going. So anyway, I'm um, sorry, that's what I said. So these are the three things that monitor my overall progress. Okay, so anyway, I could get some more reputation and some research ability of my zoo. Or I could take this one, one reputation, and I can increase my hand size by five. That's a big deal. Because when we go to a break, which again, um, in the solo game is going to happen when I move through seven turns, I'm going to make money based on my appeal, but I'm going to have to discard my hand down to three. So if I've got extra cards in my hand at that point, I lose them. Uh, not my bonus cards. Uh, those just stay off to the side. But I'll have to discard down to three. Now, I'm not worried about that. I'm going to get this monkey played before there's a break. So I'm going to have three. But it might still be nice to increase my hand size to five so I can hold more cards longer because I can turn cards into money whenever I want. On the flip side, though, if I'm about to lose, if it is about to have to discard cards, I could trash them instead, send them off someplace else, and convert them into resources thanks to my commercial harbor. So, okay, I don't think I need a bigger hand size because of my special power. And that's not what I wanted anyway. I'm doing a level five, but I'm, I'm doing it as a level three action, I'm going to make an association with a zoo somewhere else. A North American zoo. Because 
I um I would not be able I would not be a responsible steward of this animal safety if I did not have the expertise of a North American zoo to help me out. One of the things that's so important about this game is there is a huge focus on the safety and well-being of the animals. We have to make enclosures that really work for them. We get the opportunity to release them to the wild after rehabilitating them, all kinds of stuff. Uh, because we are a responsible, scientifically grounded and focused zoo. All right, so anyway, so I'm going to take this, and by doing that, I put it over here on my board in my first association spot. And you can see, I can have up to four associations with different zoos around the world. This first one um, doesn't give me a bonus. The second one will actually let me upgrade one of my cards. So I get to do super sponsorships, let's say. But this first one, all it does is, it will now give me a discount for the rest of the game. It costs me three bucks less to put a North American animal into an enclosure in my zoo. Because I've got that extra expertise. Okay, so that was my turn. My second turn, I did an association action, even though it could have been level five. I did a level three. This does not refill immediately, by the way. So if there was somebody else who wanted a North American association, too bad. They were too slow. I snagged it before they could get it. And now everything else just got better. Now I can do a level five sponsorship. I could do a level four animals. I could do a level three card action. Or again, I could do a level two build. Okay. So that was my second turn. And my opponent just keeps on ticking down. Okay, now my third action is going to be a level 4 animal action, which means still I can only play one. Now, if this card had been upgraded, a level 4 would let me do two animals. Even a level 3 would let me do two animals. And a level 5 would let me place two animals and increase my reputation. And not only, if I have the level, um, if I had the upgraded animal action, normally with the regular animal action, you can only play cards from your hand. If you have the upgraded one, you can play cards from the main board. And the ones you have access to depends on how high your, um, your reputation is. If I have a reputation up this high, I could uh, play the Nile Crocodile. If I had it up this high, I could play the Crocodile or the Stoat. If I had it all the way up, I could get these domestic goats, etc., etc. But all that's for later. I have not increased my reputation, so I only have access to this, and that's not even an animal card, but it doesn't matter because I haven't upgraded my animals. It's a level 4 animal action. I can play one card, and folks, you already know what card I'm going to play. Say hello to my little friend. Okay, this is going to cost me a size 2 enclosure, so I flip this to indicate it is Occupado. This is going to cost me 11 bucks, so I sent my 20, and I get 9 and change. Let's go ahead and get 10 and pay 21. Okay. And again, I couldn't have done this without first having the association with a North America. All right. So now I, a couple things happen. First of all, my zoo is more appealing. People want to come and see these adorable little uh, capuchins, uh, which are a vulnerable species. So my appeal jumps up one, two, three, four, five. And just like that, uh, instead of making 12 bucks income during, uh, during breaks, I make 15. So that's cool. And I get access to a special power. Now, this is an aggressive power. This is a nasty power. This is pilfering. And what this means is, if I were playing a multiplayer game, I could pick somebody else around the table, probably pick somebody with a big hand of cards, and say, hey, I'm pilfering from you. I could either um, randomly steal one card from their hand or five of their bucks. They get to choose whether I'm stealing their money or their cards. And now here's the thing, folks. I hate that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to steal from other people. And so on any one of these cards that has this negative impact, they have an alternate positive impact you can do. And if you're playing the multiplayer game, you can choose. Do the negative one or the positive one. Now in the solo game, I don't have anybody to steal from, so I'm just going to do the positive one. I'm going to sprint, which means I get to draw one card from the deck. So that was my reward. I got five appeal, and I drew an extra card. All right, and what do I get? I get... Ghoul's Monitor, which needs a size 3, um, although ultimately, I could put it, it could take up two spaces of my uh, reptile house, if I ever build a reptile house. It's going to cost 15. It doesn't have any other requirements. It is a lizard from Australia. It's a scavenger. It will give me 6 appeal. More appealing than the monkeys. Go figure. I'm sorry, I don't know if Capuchin are officially monkeys or not. But it also lets me scavenge shuffle the discard pile, and get two cards out of it, adding one to my hand. Wow. Pretty cool. So anyway, this went into my hand because I didn't pilfer, I sprinted. Okay, so that was my turn. The animal card becomes my new weakest card. 
and time continues to tick. Again, if I were playing other players, they would just all take their turns and it would come back to me. So, hooray, I've got an animal. I'm, I'm making money. I've got one of the two primates I need to score the lowest level of this primate conservancy um, objective, which if I can do it, could give me two, four, or five conservancy if I've got two, four, or five primates. So, what am I going to do now? Well, one thing I'm going to do is not cheat. I totally forgot, folks. And please, always watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on, like I said at the beginning. Because when I make goofs, Paulo catches them and puts them in Klingon subtitles that appear down here at the bottom of the screen. When I did my association and um, you know, got that partnership with this North American zoo, I forgot. That happened because I had an agent who I could send out to make it happen. It's kind of a little worker placement thing. So, that agent is here. Even if I wanted to do another association action right now, like a level 2 association to increase my reputation around the world, I can't do it because my agent is gone. Now, over the course of the game, I could unlock more agents so I could do more actions. But if I wanted to, if I had another agent and I wanted to get another partnership with another zoo, I wouldn't be able to do this because I block myself. If uh, there's a reminder here, um, you can do an action with one, but if you've already gone there, you need to have two agents to be able to do that action a second time. Now, it doesn't matter. I don't have any more agents. I've just got my one. So even if I want to do a level two association, I can't do it. Not until I get my agent back. And that will happen when we have a break. And remember, we're going to have a break after seven turns. All right. Uh, in a solo game. It's different in the multiplayer game. And in fact, it might be worthwhile for me to explain how that's different. I've got five cards here now, right? Um, and uh, I'd like to get this Vulture into play. But I can't do it until I get some research tokens. Now, if I could do another association, I could get research tokens here. But then I'd also need a size 4 enclosure. I can't build a size 4 enclosure. I can only build size 3 enclosures. So I've got to wait for my build card to make it over here to level 4 so I can make the space for this bird. So, how am I going to get this up? By either doing sponsorship or cards. Let's get some more cards, everybody. This is a card game, after all. So I'm going to trigger this action. Oh, although, 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 if I trigger this as a level four action, I get to draw two cards blind from the deck and add them to my hand. And that's great, but I do have to remember, we're going to have a break soon, and my hand size is three. If I can't get all those cards played or used, I'll have to throw them away. Although remember, because I've got my um, commercial harbor, I could convert them into points over time. Now here's the deal. If I could get this up to level five, then I would get to draw three cards and discard one. And I could even discard cards that are already in my hand that I don't like. So that's a more powerful thing. Or alternately, instead of drawing three and discarding one, thereby increasing my total hand by two, I could snap. Snapping is hugely important. If this were level five, I could snap. And that means instead of drawing blind and hoping for the best, I could get any face-up card I want. And that means I could target. Like, for instance, I need two Predators. Here's a predator right here. Here's a and here's a here's a predator sponsorship over here. I could hope I get predators by drawing blind, or I could snap and grab the predator I want before it goes away. Because these cards won't stay around. If there were other players, of course, they might get grabbed by other players. But when we get to the break, which is coming soon, the two leftmost cards are going to be removed. Uh, they go into the discard pile. Everything slides over. New stuff comes out. So. I think it makes sense. I'd like to get some more cards now so I have more flexibility, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to do a sponsorship instead. A level 5 sponsorship. And now that will slide it over, and then the cards will come up here, and then I can do a level 5 card turn. Yeah. So, let's talk about sponsorships. I have a choice. I can either play a sponsorship card up to level 5. And sadly, I have none. If I had the Spotted Hyena compound in play, oh my gosh, that would be so great. Uh, because it ties into carnivores. Or not carnivores, predators. And what it says is, every time I play a predator icon, and I want to play predator icons because of this predator conservancy goal, then um, I reveal the topmost uh, X cards of play. Uh, what is the X? X is the number of the predator icons that are on the card that I play. Add one animal card to my hand. So I draw blind and hopefully get more animals to play. Plus, uh, this yellow thing is something that happens immediately. I will immediately put this spotted hyena compound for free on the board. This won't cost anything. My sponsors, who care about the, um, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the health and welfare of the spotted hyena, will come in and build this for me. Um, and they will give 
me this power that whenever I put more carnivores into play, I get to draw more cards and potentially start a little miniature engine going. And hey, what do you know? This is a rocky card too. Remember, I might want a climbing park, which means I'm looking for more rock icons. Oh, I would love to have this card so much. So very much. But the only way I can get it, since it's out here, is by snapping. So I'll probably grab that later. But here's the deal, folks. I mention all this because if I had this in my hand right now, I'm doing a level 5 sponsorship. This is a level 5 sponsorship card. It means I'd be able to put, I'd be able to do all of this stuff for free because I got my sponsor all the way up. So here's the deal. I want to get that card, but... If I do that, my sponsorship is going to crash all the way down here, and I'll have to wait a while for it to climb all the way back up before I could get this into play. And that's the crux of the game. Trying to time things right, knowing that when you do an action to set yourself up for later, it might be much later before you can do the action you want to do. But remember, when we break, this is going to be gone. And right now, because I have not upgraded my card action, the nice thing about upgrading the card action is, when you're drawing, you can either draw a blind or you can grab from the main board. I haven't upgraded this yet. So the only way I can get that is with a snap. And the only way I can get a snap is to get my card to level 5. And the only way I can get my card to level 5 is to have a sponsor. Now see, at this point, if I had one of those sweet, sweet X's, if I had built up here and I had the X, what I could do right now is I could spend that X and treat this 4 as a 5, and then that means I'd be able to snag this, and then the cards would go down, and then the next turn I'd be able to play it because this would still be at level 5. Ah! I am now bitterly regretting this choice! Remember I said, oh, it's nice to have access to my special power, but those X's are everything, and I didn't give myself an X! But say lobby. I'll live with it. So, we're going to do a sponsorship. And um, it's not doing... A, I'm just doing this to get this out of the way so I can snap up that card. Although, man, it would be so painful to do all this and then another player on their turn went and grabbed it away from me. But, you know, that's the nature of a drafting game. You make your choices. You hope you can draft what you want. But anyway, though. Um, so, I'm doing the sponsorship. And because I have no sponsors in hand... I didn't have any in my starting hand at all, did I? Did I discard... Oh, I did have one. If I had kept this in my hand, the sea turtle tank, I'd be able to put it into play. And it's a water tile that does kind of the same thing as the hyena thing. Um, you know, but anyway, doesn't matter. I didn't do that one. I don't have it. So, instead of playing a sponsor card, which I don't have, I can instead get five bucks, because I'm doing a level five action, and break five. Okay, so first of all, let me get those five bucks. I'm rich. Rich, I tells you. I've got 15. And break five. What does that mean? In the solo game, break means nothing. But in a multiplayer game, breaking is a really big deal. And in this case, what you do is you move the break, this cute little wooden coffee cup, basically, forward the number of steps. Every time you do a card action, you break two. You move it forward two. In this case, I would move it forward one, two, three, four, five. And the reason that's important is because once it moves all the way and it hits this spot, that triggers everybody... Stop the game, take a break. Discard down to your hand size, um, lose the two leftmost cards, get your income based on your appeal and other things. So, um, And multiple players, of course, will be making the break. And the player who is the one that does the last step and causes this to cross over the line and trigger the break for a reward for being timing it right, they get one of those sweet X tokens, which again, are everything. But in the solo game, this has no use. You don't even put it out on the board. I'm just putting it because I like the look of a little coffee cup. Or perhaps a tea cup, if you like. Instead of the breaks happening based on player choice, you ignore the break command, and instead, there's basically going to be a break every time this timer goes. It's another player who's triggering the break. So anyway, so I didn't do the break, but normally I would have moved it forward. One, two, three, four, five. And then other players were like, oh my gosh, can I trigger it four? And then they would get the free X and we get all the income. But again, we're playing uh, solo. So I ignore that. I made the money. This slides down. And that was my turn. So all I did was make some money. And in a multiplayer game, I would move the timer up. And hold on a second, folks. I think I see an eyeball at the door. Uh, honey pie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Hold on a second. Um, yep. Okay. Here we go. Uh, 
Uh, Jen um, is in the middle right now. Sorry, folks. We interrupt this run through for a breaking news. Uh, in case you didn't notice, uh, my wife and I are supporting the uh, the struggle in Ukraine with the invasion, the war, and all that. And one of the things my wife is doing to help with that is she has started a new line of Witwat. These cool, adorable little Ukrainian flag inspired alien Witwat uh, that are blue and yellow. The Ukrainian flag. And Jen was working on some of these this morning, and she said, hey, um, would you want these on the camera? And I'm like, i got to start filming. And she brought them down anyway. So we are going <laughs> to interrupt a little bit, um, and we're gonna, I'm going to switch back over to the overhead. Let's see here, main view. Uh, Jen's pieces are always so much fun to use in place of regular game markers. There's my appeal. There's my reputation. There's my conservancy. Um, and I just wanted to mention them. Uh, oh, I see she brought some more of them wanted to mention them because right now if you go check out her Etsy store there's a link for it down in the show notes you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen or just go to ukraine.rado.com uh, if you buy any of these special Ukraine edition Witwat which is the uh, the name of her little alien fun pieces she makes what in the world is that yeah uh, which is these this is a wit wit what in the world is this two of them are a Witwat what in the world are those if, uh, if they look adorable to you and you you would like to support the people of Ukraine, um, go to ukraine.rado.com, hit that I, follow the links in the show notes. A hundred percent of the proceeds Jen makes off of these is going directly to care.org, um, which is helping, um, you know, refugees. It's helping women, children, and the elderly, uh, to get out of harm's way. So you can make a real difference in the world. So, uh, that's just going on right now. And, uh, we figured that was important enough to interrupt this run through. And so we are going to be be um, Ukraining it up for the rest of this. So, uh, folks, if you have any questions, you can uh, post comments down below. But otherwise, thanks, Honey Pie. Thank you. All right. And uh, where was I? I've totally forgotten what I just did. Let me see here. I thought, oh, right. We just did the sponsorship. I made some money. And the timer moves on. Is that right? Because first I built, then I put the animal or the association. Then I did the uh, thing. Yeah. And then I did uh, the monkey. And then, right. Okay. So it's my turn again. Right. Let's go. It's time for a card turn. Okay. And again, if I were playing a multiplayer game, it would be a break of two. We'd be getting closer to the break when all the income and stuff happens. But as it is, I ignore that in the solo game. But I do get to draw cards from the deck or snap. This is level five. I'm going to snap up that hyena compound because that is awesome. And now here's the deal, folks. If I were playing a multiplayer game, I don't think I'd have a chance for this because everybody knows predators are more valuable in this game because uh, there were, in a, in a three player game, there are three of the, or in a two or three or solo game, there are three of these put on display. In a four player game, there'd actually be four of them. And I'd have to rotate them like this, but they wouldn't fit on screen. So anyway, I grabbed this in my hand. Everybody would have wanted it. And uh, I don't know if I would have gotten it first, but I did. And so we slide on over. And a new card comes out. And what is it? It's a Chinese water dragon. And time continues to tick. And now I've got a problem. Because I've got too many cards in hand. Um, it, when we get to that break, I'm going to have to discard down to three. That is bad. I need to start using my special power. And either get these into play, which is the ideal thing. Or convert them into money. All right. Because I don't want to lose them. So what did I just get? Oh, I got my hyena compound. I definitely want to hold on to this. And you know what? You know what I think last turn? On the same turn where I, on my last turn, when I did my card action and I got that, I will have discarded this because I don't have enough time to go after lizards. Lizards are not a target. I don't have enough time. So I had discarded that on my last turn to get three more coins. One, two, three. Bip, bop, boop. Okie doke. So... And now it is my turn again. Do I have enough time? I would have to build an enclosure and then um, put the animals in play. And now, interestingly, my build action has made it all the way to the top. Remember when it was all the way down here and I could only build tiny things? Now I can build huge things. All right. I could build a size 5 or anything below. And remember, this vulture needs a size 4. This peafowl needs a size 3. So, what I can't do is, I cannot get my sponsorship going, because it's going to take a while for this sponsor to climb all the way back up here. So, I'll save that for later. Now, this Savannah card, this is an association card. You'll notice, it's the exact same as the uh, objective cards that were here as part of setup. On a future turn, if I ever send an agent over here, 
as a level five association action, then that means I could either mark my progress on these, or I could show the whole world, look, I've got a Savannah card. And I could uh, play it and release a Predator to the Wild and get more Conservancy points. I definitely want to hold on to this because I want to get um, you know Predators into play so I can mark this, and then I want to release them to the Wild so I can mark this. That's a great one-two combo, but that's a ways off. I don't even have any Predators in play yet. I got a little uh, monkey. So, right. Um, so, I've got two turns I can see. And, you know, this happens in a multiplayer game. In a multiplayer game, you can look to see how far it is, and you could guess, you know what? we probably got a couple more rounds before somebody's going to process line. I know I've got two more rounds. One round to build, one round to play. But the problem is... I don't have an association with Asia to do the Indian Peafowl. I do not have any research tokens to do the Long Build Vulture. So I am not going to be able to get either of these into play. Which means we're going to hit it and I'm going to have four cards and I'm regretting now not having increased my hand size to five. Ugh! All right. So anyway, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I should still... I should take advantage of this. I should go on ahead and do a big old build. Let's do this. I could build a size 5 enclosure, which would cost 10. Uh, size 5 times 2 is 10. And now that's big enough to hold the vulture, or the peafowl, or, or the Nile crocodile, which needs a gigantic size 5 enclosure. But it's a reptile. I'm not really focusing on reptiles right now. So, okay, I'm definitely going to build a big enclosure. I only need a 4. Do I build a 5 to future-proof? I mean, I'm not going to get this now in Crocodile, because when the break comes, this and the bird breeding... Pro oh, the bird breeding program, which would tie in very nicely with this bird association objective. Ah! Again, you can't do everything in this game, no matter how much you want. These are both going to go away. I, mean, I guarantee you, if I were playing multiplayer, somebody else would have grabbed, snapped this up by now, because they'd be pursuing a bird strategy. I'm not pursuing anything yet. So far, I'm only doing primates, because I've got the one monkey. Ah! Anyway, though, I think... Money gets tight the longer the game goes. I'm also going to need 20 bucks to put this card into play. So I think I'm going to uh, go a bit cheaper. I'm going to spend... Uh, instead of 10, I'm going to spend 8. So there goes 10. I get 2 and change. And build a size 4 enclosure. As you can see, it's 1, 2, 3, 4. And now, because I've already built this, I must expand from here. And i got to decide, where am I going to expand? Okay, if I go like this then hey, I'll cover this up. I'll get this benefit. What is that benefit? That benefit says, hey, pick any of my cards and shove them back over to the one spot so the other cards can become more powerful. That's very cool, but I don't know that... I mean, and it means I could be able to get to my sponsorship, which I want to do for my Spotted Hyena compound. I could get to that even faster. I mean, I want to put this into play um, before I play any Predators. Uh, although, I don't even have any Predators in hand yet. Ah! Right, so I could go like that, or I could go like this, which means I'd cover that space up, and I'd increase my zoo's reputation. And the nice thing is, doing this, I'm getting closer to be able to build up around here now and get those X's. You already saw how badly I wanted those X's. Yeah, I think I'm going to build like this. There I go. So I built it. I mean, what else could I do? You know, I could... Actually, that's pretty much about it. I'm kind of tied in by this hilly area and this water area. So I'm going to do that. All right. And that means... Uh, Hello, uh, wait, what? move up to level 2. Now that means in the future, via certain actions, I have access to 2 cards. Now I want to keep on moving up, because when I hit space 5 on my reputation, I'll be able to upgrade any one of my cards. Which again, is awesomely powerful. But that's a ways off. So I'm moving this up, I have access to cards, although the main way I have access to these cards is through upgrading my cards. Um, so anyway, so I'm not going to worry about that. And, more importantly, I just wanted to be able to build up here and get to some X tokens sooner than later. Um, because oh, they're so important. Anyway, so that's it. I built... I could have built a size 5. I only built a size 4. This slides on down. I won't be building anything big for a while. Time is almost up. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, no, I've still got time. All right. So, uh, one more turn. My association is back up to level 5, which I think is where it started. Unfortunately, I don't have an agent. I would like to do that. I can't. I would like to do an animal action. I can't, because I don't have the science. I mean, I need to do an association to get one of those two things. I would like to do a uh, sponsor. But I can't, because it's not level 5. I certainly can't do this. So I can't play any of my cards right now. And that means... 
at, during the break, which is coming, I'll have to throw one away. So right now, as painful as it is, instead of throwing one away, I'm going to discard one as a bonus action because of my commercial harbor and get three more bucks. Oh my gosh, I don't want to do this. Which one do I get rid of? Well, here's the deal. I mean, I, both of these are great. Get this before I play carnivores, play carnivores in my zoo, and then play this afterwards to release them. This is all too good. The only problem is I have no carnivore cards. Although I do see the stoat. And the stoat is going to stick around. Hopefully I could get the stoat pretty soon. And that'd be my first carnivore. And more carnivores will come. They're a very common card. So if I'm going to get rid of one of these birds, do I get rid of the peafowl, which increases my appeal by 7 and lets me posture? Or do I get rid of... Oh, shoot! Folks, folks, folks! I forgot. Another problem. Klingon subtitles were on. When I played this um, you know, white-faced uh, Capcan, since it was a North American animal and I had an association, I didn't pay 11 for this. I got a $3 discount. So I played 8 I have 3 more bucks. Oopsie. Again, Klingon subtitles would have made that clear at the time. Sorry, I forgot about that. Anyway, though. So, here's the other thing. I want to get rid of both because these birds are both Asian. So, once I get an Asian association, I would get a discount on playing both of these. And this one, I have to have an Asian association to play this. But if I'm going to keep both of these because these are both great, which of these carnivore cards am I going to get rid of? I took a whole turn to snap this up. There's no way I'm getting rid of that. So, I got to ask myself, do I have time before the game is up to get to get enough carnivores out to score this and then to release carnivores to score this? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Okay, I'm going to regret this later, folks. I'm going to say goodbye to the peafowl. I'm going to jettison two birds in the hand for no carnivores that I even have yet, but for a future promise of great carnivores. And the reason I'm, I'm getting rid of that one instead of this one is because... This one costs a bit more, but hey, increasing my people by five gives me my first conservancy and gives me reputation and lets me add more cards to my hand from the discard pile. So maybe I'll get the peafowl back. Who knows? And it's a rocky card and it's a science-based card and both of these objectives. It helps me with either of them. So yikes. Okay, so that was it. Now, and that was something only I had to deal with because of my special power. But I've still got to do something. I'm not going to associate because my agent is tied up. I'm not going to do an animal card because I can't play them yet. I'm not going to do a sponsor. I could do a sponsorship and make some cash, but I need this to get up here so I can get this hyena compound into play. That's what I need to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and that's going to be perfect when I do because I just looked around. Oh my God, that's going to be amazing. I need to get this up here ASAP. But until I move these cards, this is going to be stuck. Urgh! Anyway, though. So, um... I could come down here, draw some more cards with my break, but then I'm just going to have to jettison them anyway. I could build, but what am I going to build? I could build a little size one thing. Now, I could build a size one. I've got the money for it. I could build a size one enclosure, which is normally not great. But hey, remember, I, I'm looking at this carnivore here, this stoat. This is a tiny little carnivore. It only needs a size one. So if I build a size one now, I could hopefully grab this later and put this carnivore in there and start working on, or not carnivore, predator, and work on my predator objective. So that's pretty cool. But there's another kind of size one enclosure I could build, which again is what I do if I did a build action right now because it's a level one. I could build a uh, kiosk or a pavilion. A pavilion, if I build this, it just increases my appeal by one because people like to be in a comfy pavilion to observe the animals. Now, that wouldn't do me much good. It wouldn't increase my income. But hey, every step along here is a step closer to victory um, with my little little Whitwat there. Hello. Aren't they adorable? Again, folks, uh, uh, hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen or follow the links in the show notes to uh, or go to ukraine.rao.com. One of these can be yours. Um, not this one necessarily because they're all bespoke, made by hand with love from Jen and 100% uh, of her proceeds go to the people of Ukraine. Anyway, sorry. Um, so anyway, I could build this pavilion or I could build a kiosk. And the way these work is you put them next to occupied buildings and they just make money, extra, more money during... Uh, and so if I put this here, hey... I would be able to bump one of these down and get my sponsorship closer to the top. Oh my gosh, that does make sense. That does make the sense. I think that makes the sense. Okay, so we're just going to do a build action. We're going to do a level one build action. I'm going to be very happy about this. Okay, now here's what I was thinking. 
I was thinking, because I'm not doing any animals for a while, I could uh, activate this card, even though I have no animals to build. Because what you can do is, you can basically pass on a turn. That means you pick a card, you put it down to the bottom, you slide everything up, which could be good, because this is, I mean, this is fine for me as a low-level card, as a high-level card. So I could do that, and if you pass and basically um, you know, downgrade one of your cards to upgrade your other ones, as a consolation for not doing anything else, you get an X. And I love those Xs. I was just about to do that. But then I realized, nope, this build is going to be very handy. Let's build a size 1. A size 1 costs 2 because, as it says here, it costs 2 per space. I'm building a size 1. And... I am... Okay, I got to choose. Am I going to build the enclosure to get this stoat? Or am I going to build the pavilion or the kiosk to make money? I think I'm going to... If I were playing a multiplayer game, I would be worried that somebody else might grab this stoat away from me. But I've got a good feeling that hopefully I'll be able to get this stoat. So I'm going to build a size 1 enclosure for that stoat. Oh! Let's see. And I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to activate this action. And this action says, Hey, you know what? Um, after the turn is over, uh, you know, I did all that. I paid my money. I'm going to bump animals down to the bottom. And now sponsors are just one step away, and which means I'll be very quickly about to get my Spy Hot IE now. All right, so I didn't build that. I am happy with that. So I didn't have to burn a turn. I actually got something for it. I didn't get the X, but if my next action is in association to cram this down, then the sponsor will go to the top, and I will be able to get my spotted hyena compound, and that's going to be awesome when it happens. Okay, so that was my turn. I did a little tiny build. And surprisingly, it climbed in spot instead of falling because I built in that spot right there. Okay, and now my it's as if somebody just triggered the break because that's how the solo game works. Once all these have moved all the way over here, you can see I just revealed the break. So let's do a break. And um, there's a nice little summary right here about how all the break works. Steps one, two, three, four, five, six, or five. And you use this little coffee cup to go through all the steps so you don't forget anything because the breaks are fairly complex. But because we're playing the solo game, there is actually a step zero. And step zero says, hey, the, the uh, AI takes one of their cubes and they put it on one of these spaces over here. All right, and then we go on with the normal stuff. Discard our hand, deal with fairies and sundry things, etc. So what does that mean? Put all those back. Bup, 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 bup. I haven't talked about it yet, but... Uh, oh my gosh, there's so much in this game, folks. Remember, I did an association action earlier. I got the in with this university, right? It was a level three. A level two action lets me increase my reputation. A level four action, uh, partnership with the university is level five. Actually mark progress on these objectives if you've reached a level of them. Level zero action is literally just making charitable donations to conservancy actions uh, groups around the world. And what does that mean? Convert money into points. And um, the first player ever to do this action can convert two into one. That's the best return. And then the next player, five to one, and then seven to one, and then ten to one. At the end of the game, after all these spaces are filled, because every time somebody does it, you know, they cover them up, so it gets more and it gets tougher. Uh, you have to pay more and more to make these donations to conservancy efforts. And here's the deal: the first one of the game just got blocked by the AI. I can never convert two into one. If I want to do this action later on, I would convert five into one. And now here's the deal. I can't do that action anyway because this is a level zero. So you might think, oh, why didn't I do that? I had a five. Why didn't I do a three plus a zero? Because you have to upgrade your association card. And once you've upgraded, you can do the donation action, which is what this is. I haven't upgraded any cards yet. All these cards get so much better when you upgrade them. Um, anyway, so uh, the uh, this is as if somebody else, another player, has already upgraded their association card and they were the first to make a donation and converted two bucks into one point. That may not sound like much, but in this game, you know, in this game, 20 points is a high score. So that is huge, especially because at the end of the game, leftover money does nothing for you and you are desperate to turn it in for points at 12 to 1 at the end of the game. So anyway, that was blocked. And now we go on ahead and we do the rest of the uh, break actions. So we did step zero for the AI. Now I got to discard down to my hand size, which is three. I have three cards. It's almost like I planned this. So I don't have to jettison any cards. This is painful when this happens. Next, we um, resolve. Remember I had talked about on the monkey that this had an aggressive attack card where I could steal from others? There are other aggressive attack cards like 
poison somebody so they are literally see, literally bleeding out resources or constrict somebody so it gets more expensive for them to do actions. These are both painful. If I were playing a competitive game and I used an attack card to do this to somebody, it's at this point that that effect would go away. As soon as somebody hits you with one of these, you are desperate to trigger the break so you can get rid of this. Now that's if you choose to play in the aggressive interactive version of the game, which I see no reason to do, because every aggressive card has a nice action you can do instead. I love it. Anyway though, so none of these have happened, nor have I triggered any action doublers. If I had set it up so I could do a double sponsorship action, if I didn't use it by the break, I would lose it. So if you've got these, you better use them quick. Alrighty, so we're skipping all that. Now, the association board gets refilled and everybody gets their agents back. So come back to me. Finally, I can do another association action. And if there is somebody who is really bummed about not being able to have a North American association, well, it comes back. So now they can. Okay? So we've uh, done that. And remember, you use the coffee cup, so we've done that. Now, the left two most cards say goodbye to the Nile Crocodile and the Bird Preeding Program. They are gone. More stuff comes out. We've got a uh, secretary bird, another bird. Oh, did I make a mistake jettisoning a bird? And an herbivore breeding program. Who has time for herbivores? All right, anyway, though. All right, so that's that. And now finally, the big ticket item, we get to our income. All righty, so we get income based on our current appeal. My appeal, according to the Witwat, is 15. So I make 15. Here's a 20. And I'll put ten back or put five back, so there I get fifteen off of that. I also get income based on my kiosks. Remember, I could have built a kiosk, which means I make a little bit more money, but I didn't choose to do that. Um, we might have cards that get in play that give us income, and uh, I don't. And there is a fourth source. This is the one saying what your appeal is, which was 15. This is a source that if I've made certain association actions, which is to say, basically, eventually eventually, I'll have two birds or two predators or two primates. At that point, I will very much want to do an aso a level 5 association action to mark one of these so I can start working my way up the conservancy board. That would be huge. How do I mark those? By taking one of these cubes. I haven't talked about these. Every player's board has a unique set of bonuses. A unique con Unless you're playing on that A board or, you know, where everybody has the same bonuses. If I do a conservancy action, I could say, take this. And that means every break for the rest of the game, I will automatically for free build a size 2 enclosure. Or I will automatically snap up one card. Or I'll automatically make another 5 bucks. So this is another source of income. You can see there's a little picture of the income over there, which matches it right there. Now as it is right now, we're early days in the game. I've only taken 7 turns. So all I, I don't have a kiosk. I don't have any special sponsor cards. I haven't unlocked any of those bonuses. So I just made my 15. And then in a multiplayer game, this would go back. In the solo game, again, we're not playing with the coffee cup. Instead, all of these cubes come back. And you will notice, folks, there's one fewer cube now. So, as the game goes on, it will speed up. And again, this replicates a multiplayer game. As players get more powerful, the breaks can come faster because you have cards that can trigger breaks as well. So, the game is speeding up. I now have six more rounds before we will go through this process again. And I will get more money. I might have to jettison cards, etc., etc. But I'm up again, and I know my first action. It's going to be to associate. Because my agent came home. and But they're, I'm just going to send them right back out there. And they're going to they could do a level 5, they're going to do a level 4. Because I need that sweet, sweet science to get this vulture into play. Nice. So, which one do I want? Do I want the double science or, or research? Or do I want the single research with reputation? Yes, please. I'll take the rep. And so, I put this over here. My first university doesn't do me any good. Other than you know, what it, it provides itself. But the next time I associate with the university, you guessed it. I'll get to upgrade any card of my choosing. So I want to get another association quick. But unfortunately, my agent is all tied up. So until we get to the next break, unless I unlock one of these agents, I'm not going to be able to do that again. But I've now got the science so I can get my super expensive vulture into play in this big enclosure I've got, which is going to increase a lot of stats for me, etc., etc. And in the meantime, this slides on over. Time passes instead of other players taking their turns. And look at that, folks. Just like that. Sponsors are back in business. Let's do a level 5 sponsor. Not to get 5 bucks this time, 
But to build that, or no, not not to build the Savannah, but to get uh, a sponsor, we'll build a spotted hyena combat. These sponsorship cards do all kinds of things. A lot of the variety of the game comes from what sponsors you get. And so this costs a level five sponsorship, no problem. I've got a level five sponsorship. Uh, and so first of all, the yellow happens immediately. Place this very special enclosure next to a rock. <gasps> oh no! Oh no! No! Oh! Read the small print. Of course, a spotted hyena wants to go next to a rocky enclosure. It set it right up there. All right, so. Uh, all right, it's not as good as I thought, but it's still pretty good. Uh, coming over here. And by the way, there's these. Uh, game comes with two trays. I, these are not extras. The game comes with these. So you put all your money in some. You put the special things over there. You put the enclosure over there. However you want to divide it. I need to find this special hyena enclosure. There's all kinds of different ones. All kinds of different shapes and sizes. For meerkats. For um, rail cars. Oh, here it is. I found it pretty easy. This is free. Normally... This is a size four thing. If I were doing this somehow as a build action, it would cost eight, but this is built for free because my level five sponsors are doing it. And what I wanted to do, this would have been so amazing. Look how well I planned it. I would have put it like this and I would have gotten two X's. Did I say how great X's are? But unfortunately, didn't read the small print. Has to be next to rocks. No rocks up there. So here's some rocks. I'll go on ahead and Oh, I can't go like that. I want to go around like this and go to the corner, but oh, I could just do this. Although that's not bad. I am not complaining. I will put this here. This is next to some rocks. I I can't do this because I got to extend. I could. Oh, I could do this. That's interesting. That would be a really tight use of space. But unfortunately, I wouldn't be getting any bonuses. And at least if I do this, I get one bonus. What is this bonus? This bonus says, hey... Grab a card from the display up to your current knowledge level. That's the picture of the little, uh, you know, the uh, knowledge icon. Um, you know, the, uh, where is it? This. My, no my reputation level is two. Because I'm covering this space, I could now immediately add to my hand a science museum, which requires four research and a level four sponsorship action, or the stoat. Remember, I wanted that sweet, sweet stoat because I have already made... A, a home for this stoat. And because I covered that space, the stoat is mine. Woohoo! Everything slides over. That was a nice... I'd still rather have those X's, if I'm honest. Because I was thinking I'd use a snap to get that stoat. But hey, now I could snap something else up. If my card... If my card... Which is about to do. It's about to make it to the top. So anyway, that was a sponsorship action. But that's not all. All right, so this is the second card I played. It will go up here. I'm just putting all my cards I played up here. Although the uh, the Capuchin, they just had a one-time benefit. The only thing that matters about them now is that, hey, I've got a Primate and I've got a North American card. Because maybe I'm going to get a, a sponsorship that says, hey, if you've got five North American cards, you'll get a blah, blah. You'll get a Presidential Medal of Freedom or something. Who knows? And so if I had that sponsorship, I'd want to have a lot of North American cards. I do have one Ape, remember, or Primate. I want to get two Primates, so I've got one. This is my first carnivore card. I've now, or predator card. I've got one predator card, or icon, and one primate. So I'm working on both of these objectives. But there's something more. Remember, from now on, I got, I got to build this for free immediately. It filled up space. It got me a bonus. That was all very nice. And every time I play a Predator icon from now on, I, I draw the top X cards. X is uh, based on the number of Predator icons I have. So the more Predators I get into my... This gets more and more powerful as it goes. I draw cards and I add one animal. So... It would suck to draw one and for this not to be an animal. Once I have three predators, I put a fourth predator in, I get four. Well, actually, this has a uh, predator icon on it as well. So the number of predators I... So if I play a predator, uh, it'll have one, two. I get to draw two. And if one of them is an animal, I get to keep it. So that's me getting cards without having to spend a whole turn. So that's very nice. I now have two cards in play. Okay. And then the sponsor sinks all the way back down. And even if I had more sponsorship actions, they wouldn't happen for a while. Moving on over, other players go, which is represented by that. And we're back up again. And so, I want to get this little fella a home. All right. And hey, uh, let's do a level three animal action. Okay. A level three means I could play one card. That's exactly... No, I can't. Because this is a European animal. To play this, I need... I didn't even look at the small print. I need an association with Europe. And I can't do that because my agent is already stuck over here. Ah! Ah! 
so I have to wait for my agent to come back so I can get a, uh, a, a European association so I can put this into play. Oh, which, by the way, would be a carnivore card, which would trigger the spotted hyena compound, which means I'd draw two and keep one if I find an animal. And not surprisingly, getting animals into your zoo is one of the biggest, most important objectives of the game, uh, as you might expect. So I'm not going to be able to do that for a while. Crap. I do. I could get this vulture in play, though. So, stoat, you're going to wait for a while. Vulture, it's your time to fly. All right, I need 20. Boom, I just went from rich to poor. This is an expensive bird. Alrighty, so I had 20 bucks. I have a size four. <gasps> oh! I need a size four enclosure that's next to rocks. I did not put this size four enclosure next to rocks, folks. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I have a size one enclosure next to rocks. Okay. I knew this from the get-go. I'm going to correct. I'm sure, again, Paulo was probably laughing at me in the Klingon subtitles because I was talking about how I was going to make this and it was going to be, and it wouldn't work. So let's just uh, retroactively say, hey, you know what? At the time, I had put it here so it was next to rocks, right? Let's just say that. And at the time I covered this up, the stoat was in the spot where I could grab it. Let's just say that's the way it worked before because I wasn't a complete and total idiot. Alrighty. And then later on, I built the... Uh, Let's say I built a stoat house right here so that I could get that because I'm trying to get around to these. And then let's still say I had done this. Let's say I'd done that so I still got... So ultimately, the same end result, just in a slightly different order so I can keep going because I knew right from the get-go when I put that gigantic enclosure down, it had to be next to rocks. I just forgot. All right, so let's say I had done that. And hey, I'm one step closer. I'm surrounded. All these X's I could get if I build a little more. So anyway, going to do... I paid the 20. What do you know? I happen to have a size 4 enclosure next to rocks because I'm not an idiot. I also have some research because... Um, oh, whoops. Hey, by the way, I forgot to do this. When I did this, boom, boom, I jumped up. I am now just one more reputation level away from being able to upgrade my first card. Oh, I want that, my precious. I need that so bad. Upgrading all of these cards is so important. It opens up so many doors. But in the meantime, though, and we're about to open those doors, folks, because I paid my 20, got my thing in place. I do not have a bird sanctuary, so we ignore this. If I had a bird sanctuary, I could put it into there, and it would take up one space instead of taking up four spaces. Bird sanctuaries and reptile houses are a great way to, squeeze, to uh, get animals into a uh, tighter space because there's special environments for them. I've got the science. I put this into play. And what happens? First of all, I've got my first bird. So I've got my first bird, my first predator, and my first primate. But I need two to score any of these. Err. Um, I've got an Asia card, which unfortunately I do not get a discount on because I don't have an association with Asia. But it's time to scavenge, folks. Shuffle the discard pile, draw three, and keep one and discard the others. But not only that, I get five. One, two, three, four, five. My income just went from 15 to 17. I get my first conservancy point. One more conservancy point, and I'll jump to this space, whereupon I can either upgrade a card or get my second agent. And you see how desperately I have wanted. If I had a second agent, I could go out there and do all the stuff I want to do. So, buddy, I need one more conservancy before I can get that bonus. So I've got my first and... Kaboom! I just hit level 5 of Renown. Reputation. So, that means I now have access to these three cards if I do upgraded card actions. And, um, because I hit this, I'm going to upgrade one of these cards. And, let's not forget, I'm going to scavenge as well. Let's do that first. And then, afterwards, I can cover all this up. You can see how, as you play more and more cards, all you need to see is the stuff up in the top right corner. Hey, I've got one primate, one bird, one, um, or, yeah, I've got a carnivore action, I've got this special action, etc., etc. Let's uh, shuffle this up, draw three, and keep one. Nice. Normally, you got to spend a whole turn getting cards, but uh, that vulture just brought me one by sca some scavenging. One, two, three. What am I going to keep? The Peafowl is back, baby. I'm back in the bird. Oh, and the bird breeding program. And, ooh, the meerkat den. Okay, I'm not going to keep this because this is all about herbivores. I, I can't do everything. If I take this, I don't have time to really focus on herbivores. So, back to impossible choices. Um, okay. So, but this one is already done. Okay, so this is great. 
Uh, this will let me um, place one free kiosk or pavilion and increase my appeal by seven, which is just upping my score. Remember, I've got 27 turns to get this and this, or this and this together. I need these things to climb. That's great. And hey, I get a kiosk or a pavilion to increase my income. But no, I'm not going to take that. I'm going to take the bird breeding program. I now have two cards I could do. Once I've got at least a size, to, a small predator, a size two predator, I could trigger this and release to the wild and get three conservancy actions. Once I've got a bird and a partner zoo on the same continent, I could get myself two conservancy and two more reputation. And here's the deal, folks. I've got a bird. I just need a partnership with Asia now. Once I've got that, I'm set. So I'm going to keep that. So I've got two more Conservancy actions that I'm saving up for in addition to these ones. Wow. And then I've got a stoat. All right. So that was all of that. But I'm still not done. By the way, let's go ahead and slide this over. Because uh, since I hit this spot, I've got to upgrade a card. Oh my gosh. So many choices. Oh, this game is so big and so rich. So what do I want to do? Well, let's go on ahead and take a look at all the upgrades. Because you've seen all of these cards in action at their base level. Let's talk about the upgraded. An upgraded animal, an upgraded sponsor, an upgraded association, build, and card action. Which of these? Because I only get one of them. So they all have certain things in common. The main thing is, all, almost all of them now give me access, since this is my reputation level, give me access to these three spaces. If I want to do a um, sponsor card, I could play it from my hand or from these three spaces. If I want to draw more cards, I could draw them blind from the monster deck, or I could draw them from these three spaces. If I want to play an animal, I could play it from my hand, or from these three spaces. So getting my reputation up, combined with upgraded cards, gives me a lot more flexibility, and lets me overcome the inherent luck of the draw. This is a crazy huge deck of cards, folks. You never know what you're going to get when you're drawing blind. Um, and it's painful to have to spend time snapping these things up as one action, and then play them as a second action. So, like, if I want more flexibility in animals, I should just take this. Because um, two things happen. First of all, I can play multiple animals quicker and easier. I can increase my reputation if I play this at level 5. And and I just get access to animals that I don't have to have in my hand. So that's very, very cool. But um, sponsors, if I want this science museum, I'd have to waste time getting it in my hand. Sponsors are great. Plus, if I upgrade the sponsors, my sponsor card becomes X plus one. So if it's at a two, it's really at a three. If it's at a five, it's really at a six. And again, or I can split the strength of my sponsor amongst multiple things. You can do the same thing with association. Before, when I went to the association area, I was only able to do one error, one action. But if I've got multiple agents, I could do multiple actions in one turn and split the power of my association. Plus, if I upgrade my association, every time I do association action, I can also donate excess money and start getting more points. And the sooner I do that, the better, because these are going to get gobbled up quick by my opponent. So I might want to upgrade my association. But hey, upgrading the building... First of all, that lets you build multiple buildings with one action, so you're not being so wasteful and slow. And um, you can start to build that sweet, sweet aviary and the reptile house. Or wait, oh, this back here. Yeah, this is the reptile house. This is the aviary. And, and the nice thing about the aviary is, remember, I've got this vulture taking up a huge... Oh, by the way, I forgot. When I built the vulture, I had to flip this to indicate that it was occupied. This is taking up a huge amount of space. It'd be really great if I had, because if I build an aviary, I could then move the vulture out of here, and I would mark that the vulture, which takes up one space in the aviary, aviary would be here like this. And then I've got room for more birds, and I could put a different animal in this. I could repurpose this to be for, I don't know, a big cat or something like that. Well, I don't know, like maybe... This secretary bird, which needs a level four. Although, ultimately, after I build this, this secretary bird could go directly into the aviary if I've already built it. How do I build this aviary? It's a one, two, three, four, five, so it costs me 10 bucks to build, but I can't build it unless I upgrade my build card. And then finally, if I upgrade my break card, well, first of all, it's much easier to snap things. And instead of drawing blind, again, I can draw from up to my reputation. Now, there's one thing about, say, hey, I want to play an animal not from my hand, right, but from the reputation. 
There's additional cost. If I had the upgraded animal and I wanted to jump right to playing the chi the Chinese water dragon, I could do it. I don't have to waste time getting it into my hand, but there's an extra cost. It would cost me eight bucks plus three more. And it says it right here. Play animal cards from within your hand or your reputation range, but that requires additional costs. So there is still a little bit. And, you know, higher my reputation, I could get to more and more stuff, but there is more you have to spend to play those. So what am I going to upgrade? They're all amazing. Well, honestly, there are other considerations besides just what these cards do, because there's also what do they unlock. You can see right here, I'm up to level 5 of reputation. Hey, I've got my first card. If I keep going, I unlock another agent. That would be great. But then once I get here, I hit a wall. I can't increase my reputation anymore. You see this little icon here? Unless I have upgraded my card. So if I plan on moving my reputation up, maybe I want to upgrade my cards. By the same token, um, if I want to get more associations with other museums, I got one uh, country I've applied with. If I get a second one, hey, I get to upgrade a card. If I can do a third country association, I get another agent. But I can't cross this line and do my third one unless I have upgraded my association card, as you might imagine. So I need that to be able to get to the higher levels of uh, working with other countries, which I might need to do for certain animals. Plus all these great bonuses. Plus, let's take another look at my board here. You may have noticed, hey, there's all these things that I get if I build here. What are all these red things? These are places that I cannot build unless I upgrade my build card. Then I can build here, here, and here, and here. And why do I care about that? Maybe I just never care? Because if at any time I have filled up every buildable space here, I increase the appeal of my zoo by 7, which means I scream up farther on this progress track, I make more income, I get closer to winning the game. So I want to fill this whole thing up, but it's impossible unless I upgrade my build card. Plus, I need to upgrade my build card to get the reptile house and the large bird area. Plus, let's not forget, sometimes there might be um, animals, there might be cards in the game that say, oh, you can't play this unless you've upgraded a certain card. Because there are so many cards with so many effects. Oh my goodness. So all of this comes down to, because I hit this spot, what am I going to upgrade? Well, I'll tell you what, folks. I'm not quite sure. i got a lot of options. I would have to think about this long and hard. If I were playing a multiplayer game, I would tell the rest of my players, hey, you know what? Go ahead and take your turns. I'm going to have to think about this for a while. I'm going to think about what is my long-term plan. Um, you know, What do I need to achieve? What's going on here? I would worry about that as uh, they took their turns, and hopefully I will have decided by my next turn comes around. But I think I'm going to stop right here, because that should give you a pretty good idea of the basic flow and gameplay of Arc Nova. Now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.